Amen. I'm going to be reading today, amen, again, uh, from the, I'll start uh, this time from Genesis chapter number 28 and, and verse number 13. Amen. Genesis chapter 28 and verse number 13. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham, thy father, and, of I and the God of Isaac. The land whereon thou liest to thee will I give it and to thy seed. Amen. And, and dropping on down to verse number uh, 19. And Jacob rose up early in the morning and took the stone which he had put up, uh, had put for his pillows and set it up for a pillar, poured oil upon the top of it. And he called the name of that place Bethel, uh, but the name of that city was called Luz at the first. Amen. And then, uh, and then we had also read uh, from, uh, from uh, in, in Genesis 12, Genesis 28 and Genesis 35 and Genesis 50. I won't be turning to all of those, but uh, the message that we feel like the Lord would give to us today and, uh, and we can do a continuation of what, uh, of what we started in our first lesson. Bethel belongs to you. Bethel belongs to you. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I pray, O oh God, that there would be a special anointing that would continue to fall upon me. I pray, O oh God, that you would help us, Lord, that we would be able, hallelujah, to see more of your glory in this service, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Thank you for standing in honor to the word of God. We spoke of the time in, in Genesis 12 as we started our study uh, this past, uh, the, the past lesson, we spoke of, uh, of, of uh, Abraham after he left the Ur of the Chaldees, the very first place, or one of the first places that he came was the place called Bethel. And, uh, and that happened in Genesis 12, 6 through 9. And, uh, and, and it was at that point that God began to start his promises and said, this is the land that will be yours for an inheritance. Genesis 13 uh, was the place where Abraham and Lot separate and uh, Lot looked at the well-watered plains of Sodom and Gomorrah. Evidently from, amen, from Bethel, you could see in a distance, in the distance, you could see uh, Sodom and Gomorrah. It's, and, uh, and of course, Bethel, I, I, uh, for those that uh, may not understand Bethel is is the name the title means the house of God and uh, and sometimes if we're not careful some things on the outside of the church will look better amen than what it looks on the inside of the house of God and uh, Lot whenever he uh, whenever he looked from Bethel and looked at the well-watered plains of Sodom and Gomorrah, amen, he said, I know it's a wicked place, but I'm willing to take my chances and go in that direction. But, but, but Abram stayed a little while longer, and in his staying, amen, God opened the door of promise to him and said, every place to the north, south, east, and west, amen. And, and isn't it the way of the world, amen, that when a person leaves the church, they leave for so little in comparison with what God opens the door, hallelujah, to those that stay in the church. He opens the door and says, look everywhere, there's plenty of blessing left. Yes, Oh, hallelujah. Amen. And so, uh, and so uh, whenever, uh, whenever Jacob came and had his encounter with God. And it's interesting that both in Genesis uh, chapters 12 and 13, God promised Abraham this particular piece of land. And then also in Genesis chapter 28, God, amen, spoke to, Ab or spoke to uh, Jacob and he said, where you're laying, that is going to be the land that I will give, amen, to 
uh, to the nation that will come after you or to your seed. It's, it, uh, it was a place of promise. At both junctures, I believe that it was a place that was uninhabited as far as a city, but it was a rather uh, kind of an oasis in the middle of a desert from what we're reading at, 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 uh, at the time of Jacob, amen, it must have been an oasis that if you were journeying through the desert, you could come to this place and you could have water. It was not a place that folks normally dwelt. But God said, this place is not going to be a pass-by place any longer, but this is going to be your land. Oh, hallelujah. You know, there's a lot of people that whenever they come into the house of the Lord for the very first time, they come and they think it's a pass-by place. Amen. I just stopped by, amen, for a minute or two, and then I'm going to leave. And uh, my, wasn't it nice while I was there? But now I've got other places and other things to do. And for those, that's all it will be is just a one-time experience. But for the people that say, I've chosen that the house of God is going to be my house. Yes. All the blessings that come whenever you let Bethel become yours. Yes. Praise the Lord. Amen. So Joseph in, uh, in Genesis chapter 50. And uh, uh, Joseph spoke to his brethren and he said, I'm getting ready to die. Joseph had been brought down into Egypt. And, uh, and this is where we closed off on our last on our last lesson, uh, on the last part of it. But Joseph said to his brethren, I'm dying and God will surely visit you and bring you out of this land unto the land which he swear unto Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. So God said, or, or rather Joseph said, I know that Egypt is not a part of my inheritance. Egypt is just a place that I'm living but God has something better for me. Yes. Amen. We, we, there's an old song, centuries old, I think. But it said, this world is not my home. I'm just passing through. My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. If we ever get wrapped up in this world, amen, and we get consumed with the things of this world, it will anchor us to a point, amen, that heaven becomes a place of dreams that we don't attain to. But the, but the way that Joseph said, I believe that in, if I'm reading it right, and I believe that I am, Joseph would have said to you as he was living his life, I don't know when, amen, we're going to leave Egypt, but I know that we're leaving. Amen. If it happens in my lifetime, I'm ready to go. If it doesn't happen in my lifetime, Take my bones out of here because I don't want to live, amen, and I don't want to be in a country that I don't belong in, amen. And this world is not my home, amen. It's the place where I have a house, amen, but I have a mansion on the other side that's reserved for me, and that's my goal is to make heaven my home. Hallelujah. Joseph said, amen, number one, God will bring you out. But then he said, and God will bring you in. Amen. And, uh, and I find that that is a very, uh, a very clear statement. We did, and we discussed how that there's a lot of people that would like to say, I'd like to live in Egypt and get the blessing of the world or the blessing of God upon my life. You can't have both worlds. No man can serve two masters. Either you serve God or you serve mammon. Amen. And so, and so we, we listen to the word of God. It says, come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing. Hallelujah. But I will be a God unto you. Amen. If you'll come out and be separate, there's a place for you Amen, that I have that's greater than anything that you have here. Joseph had all of the position of Egypt. He had the wealth of Egypt at his disposal. But Joseph said, Amen, 
My position doesn't mean anything, amen, in comparison with what God has promised me, amen. I know that there's a land that's better than this. And, uh, and God can bless us down here. We may have, we, God may set us in positions, but don't let the positions and don't let the things of this world in, in, ensnare us into thinking there's something more, uh, more gray or greater than what God has prepared for me. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Exodus chapter number three. And, uh, and we're going to try to journey just for a little while longer. But I feel like, amen, that this is going to give us just a, a little bit of an indication of how Bethel becomes ours. Amen. In Exodus chapter 3 and verse number 7. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt, have heard their cry by the reason of their taskmasters. For I know their sorrows, and am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians. Out of the hand of the Egyptians, and to bring them up out of that land, unto a good land, and a large, unto a land flowing with milk and honey, unto the place of the Canaanites, and the Hittites, and the Amorites, Perizzites, and Hivites, and Jebusites. Now therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Israel is come up unto me. I have seen the oppression wherewith the Egyptians oppressed them. Come now, I will send thee unto Pharaoh. Amen. And thou, that thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. So God said, I am now going to do what I promised that I would do even during Joseph's time. I promised that I would bring them out. It never said that there would be, amen, that they would be able to have a battle and that they would get that land as their inheritance. God said, let Egypt have what's Egypt's. Hallelujah. And you leave Egypt behind because there's a better land with better promises, it's large, it flows with milk and honey. The Egyptians can be stuck down there, amen, and they, do, and they don't have anything, but you leave and you go to a land, amen, that flows with milk and honey, amen. And uh, so again, that promise was, I'm bringing you out to bring you in, amen. And uh, so we... Again, refresh our minds. Our text is, Bethel belongs to you. Bethel belongs to you. Amen. So where they were at was in Egypt, but Bethel was in the promised land. And to get from, amen, from Egypt into Bethel, to the, to the house of God, the first thing that was going to have to happen is God was going to have to help them get victory over the Egyptians. Their total, amen, victory didn't come in one night. But there was step by step as they began, as God began to work on their behalf, and they began to leave Egypt behind. So we, as the people of God, when we first come to God, amen, you remember the night that you repented of your sins? Amen, you asked God to forgive you. But I can promise you if you're anything like me, there were some struggles along the way where, we got, where God had to deal with us and, uh, and we, I left it behind, amen. But there has been some battles with, amen, the spirit of Egypt and uh, things of this world will con continually try to bombard me, amen, to try to keep me, amen, from leaving Egypt because they understand that if I ever get free from Egypt, there's a place called Bethel, hallelujah, that will be mine. 
As long as I'm living in Egypt, I can never understand the fullness of what God has in store for me at the house of God. Amen. As long as I'm living here, I can't experience what God has for me. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. And so finally the last plague came and, uh, and Egypt was finally judged and uh, Israel began their journey out of Egypt. And they're on a, a it, it would be a little over 40 something year journey, amen, from Egypt into the promised land. There's a lot of things that can keep you from the house of God. There's a lot of things that can keep you from the place where God wants you to be. Amen. And for, and for Israel, there was the doubt, will I ever get there? Is it really something that's out there for me? Will God provide my needs? Will God take care of me? What is it that God wants me to do? And so God led them into the wilderness to let them know, I am the Lord that provides for you. I am your healer. I am your protector. I am your victorious one. And I will take care of you. <coughs> Excuse me. And so during their journey through the wilderness, amen, they had crossed, they had crossed the Red Sea, journeyed through the wilderness, and now <coughs> Moses has passed from the scene and Joshua has taken the leadership. There's a Jordan River that, uh, that is there, and, uh, and they'll never be able to get to Bethel without, without getting over the Jordan River. Jordan River's at flood stage. And, uh, and God had said, you've never passed this way before. There's some things that you haven't, that you have not yet tapped into. But if you follow me, I'm going to take you uh, through the river. Hallelujah. Amen. And, uh, and when I get you to the other side of the river, it won't be long until Bethel will be yours. <clears throat> oh, hallelujah. And so they got through the river. You know that sometimes whenever we're walking with God, amen, and God is taking us to his house and into the things of the, of the realms of the spirit, sometimes we go through rivers that seem to be uncrossable. We go through circumstances in our life and trials in our life that seem to say, Hold on, you can't get to the house of God because I'm an obstacle that's in your way. But if we can trust God, God will take those obstacles and he'll make a way right through the middle of them. Hallelujah. He always does. Hallelujah. Then we went to Joshua chapter number six. And it's interesting as I as I started our first as I started our first lesson this morning, I mentioned the fact that one of my launch off points as I as the Lord was speaking to me was Joshua chapter number six. And listen to what it says. Now Jericho was straightly shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out, and none came in. And the Lord said unto Joshua. See, I have given into thine hand Jericho, the king thereof, and the mighty men of valor. Now, I'd like to stop for just a moment because I said we're going, we'll, we'll get to Bethel. They got through the Jordan River. They had left Egypt behind. But now standing in front of them was this city that had walls that were very thick that separated them from a little town called Bethel. And before I can get to Bethel, there's a battle that I've got to fight. And there are walls that seem to be impenetrable. It's a, it's a wall of defense. It's not an offensive thing, but it's things that stop me, that hinder me from seeing what God wants for me. 
Hallelujah. And, and, uh, and when Joshua looked at those walls, they were walls that were so big. The Bible said that, that, uh, that Rahab had her dwelling in the wall. It was big enough for some kind of a house. Now, I don't know if it was, you know, thousands of square feet, but it was big enough so that she could have at least a bedroom and get her family into the house. And we also know that it must have been on the top of the walls because the spies had crawled to the roof of it and they were, and the spies laid on the roof of the house and from where they were at, whenever, whenever she let them down, she had to have a rope to let them down to the ground. It wasn't some small place. I, I, I don't know exactly how tall that it was, and I'm not going to even try to guess, and I don't like to uh, you know, try to get, read what somebody else guesses. I just know it was big enough that whenever they decided to lower themselves down, they couldn't just grab a hold of the windowsill and, you know, drop down and then let go as they, they must have been afraid of falling. And when Joshua looked at these walls, Joshua didn't know what to do. And the Bible said that Jericho was shut up. They said, Jericho said, you'll never get through us. You can't conquer us because the walls are too big. We have mighty men in here, but we really don't need to fight you because our walls will keep us from having to fight you. We can defend ourselves because of our walls. And the king of Jericho said, this is my city, and what happens and belongs on the other side of this city, it all belongs to me because I, you see, am the king of Jericho. And, uh, and in order for you to get anything on the other side of Jericho, you have to go through my authority, and you have to go through what I say. And you have to take from the mighty men that I have. And in order to do that, you're going to have to break down the walls. And I know you can't break down the walls. But God said, see, I have given into thine hand Jericho and the king thereof and the mighty men of valor. God said, hallelujah. There's a place on the other side of Jericho that I'm leading you to. But until you get, amen, to Bethel, you're going to have to face a Jericho and watch as I break down the walls, hallelujah, that are separating you from the promises that I have for you. If you'll walk around the walls one time each day for six days and walk around the walls seven times on a seventh day, if you'll hear the sound of the trumpet, follow my, follow my commands and shout unto God, for I have given you the city. I have given you the victory. Hallelujah. You're going to stand back and you're going to watch as that that seemed to be, amen, impossible becomes a possibility. You're going to watch, hallelujah, amen, that that says no way become a way. You're going to watch, hallelujah, a defeat happen before your very eyes. And the walls of the city fell down flat. Oh, praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. What I want you to know is 
that many times between you and I and the house of God, there are walls that would say, oh, I know that you want blessings, but you can't have a blessing until you break down my wall. There's some kings out there that are saying, I have the authority on what you can have and what you can't have. But just as God gave a promise, hallelujah, unto Joshua, I believe that God gives us a promise today and he says see I have given into thine hand hallelujah the city that stands between you and the promises of God hallelujah the city that stands between you amen and the blessings of God the city that stands between you and the relationship that you can have with God amen and Jericho amen is no match for the king that we serve Oh, hallelujah. There's an adversary that would like to stop, amen, that would like to stop us from getting to Bethel because he understands if you ever get to Bethel and you ever understand that Bethel is your city, hallelujah, and Bethel is your place, there's nothing that can stand in your way from that point on. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Amen. And so <clears throat> God said, you march around the city. They marched around a total of 13 laps. When they, when they stepped back and shouted, you know the story. The walls of the city fell down flat. And they destroyed that city. Hallelujah. And God said, what I, what I want you to do is I want you to take the silver and gold all the metals and I want you to give it to me the rest of the city burn and don't you touch the things of that city because those walls that that kept you from the house of God you don't want anything in your life that will keep you from the house of God to be put into your house he said, I, 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 it's, a, it's an accursed thing. And, and if anybody touches that thing, it's going to bring a curse upon them and their family. Do you know that whenever somebody stops, stops, in, uh, stops coming to the house of God, amen, that, there is, that, that there's things that begin to happen? And, and, God, and God speaks very strongly and he says, don't you let anything step between you and the house of God. I wish, I wish everybody was here today. Amen. Because Bethel really does belong to you. Bethel really does belong to you. Not everybody's going to get to Bethel. But Bethel, amen, does belong to you. And I, I, I hope... I hope I can, I, I hope that we, for us today, we can grab a hold of this because, amen, there's, there's going to be some things that stand in our way and try to keep us from Bethel. But if you can ever, hallelujah, look at Jericho and say, oh, I know what you are. You're, you're just nothing but trying to keep me from the house of God. You're a spirit that's doing nothing but trying to keep me from the house of God. You're trying to keep me from doing what's right. You're trying to keep me distracted by the things of this world. You're trying to keep me, amen, from you, you, you saw that I had victory here, but you're saying that there's no victory here. Hallelujah. But Jericho, you're going down because I understand there's the house of God on the other side of Jericho. I understand, amen, that there are things, amen, that I can get that I've never got before. Now, there was just, there's, this, there's this fellow by the name of Achan. And Achan, the Bible said, he looked at a little wedge of gold and a few pieces of silver. And he looked at a Babylonish garment. And he said... In, 
in the significance of what we're burning and giving to the house of God is such a small thing. It won't hurt me to have this little bit. No one will ever know any different. I can live my own way. I can do my own thing. Amen. And, uh, and Achan decided that he would take, amen, of the city that stopped, amen, Israel from going in and possessing Bethel. Hallelujah. And Achan said, I'm going to take of that city that has hindered us from going in and possessing what God has promised us. I'm going to take of the hindrance. And when he took it, it hindered Israel from going against a city that was much smaller, less able to handle anything. And, and Ai was the name of that city. And when Israel tried to go against them, amen, the next thing you know, Israel's tucking and running and they come back and there's lives that are lost. And there hadn't been any lives or scars before this. And, uh, and when they got back to the camp, they came to, to, uh, to Joshua and they said, what are we going to do? And Joshua, he rent his clothes and he knelt before the Lord and he said, God, I thought you said that you would give us victory. And God said, if you'll get, amen, the spirit of Jericho out of Israel, there's a Bethel that's waiting on you. If you'll get the things, amen, of Jericho out of your life. Hallelujah. There's a place of promise that's waiting for you. Amen. And, uh, and, Je and, uh, and so Joshua, amen, began to call for the people of Israel. And whenever Achan was called, amen, watch what happens. He said, give glory to God. Amen. There was something about it. Whenever, amen, whenever you have something in your life, Amen. You can't worship with the freedom, amen, as you can whenever, oh God, there's no distraction here. I'm going to give everything that I have to you. Hallelujah. You're number one in my life. Hallelujah. Amen. And so Achan and his family were destroyed. And God said, now, and, and, and I go to, to Joshua chapter number eight. And I'm going to, and I'll, I'll be closing off with this. <clears throat> and the Lord said unto Joshua, Fear not, neither be thou dismayed. Take all the people of war with you and arise and go up to Ai. See, I have given into thy hand the king of Ai and his people and his city and his land. Thou shalt do unto Ai and her king as thou didst to Jericho and her land. Only the spoil thereof, the cattle thereof, shall, they, shall you take for a prey unto yourselves. So he tells them the way that they're going to win the battle. Verse number 17. It was through ambush. And verse number 17, there's a... This, this passage of scripture just kind of caught my attention. And it said, And there was not a man left in Ai or Bethel that went not out after Israel... They left the city open and pursued after Israel. When we, when we read back in, in, in Genesis, it said that, that, uh, that Abraham had lodged between Hai and Bethel. And, 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 uh, and as he lodged there, God said, see... I have given this land unto you. When J Jacob laid in the midst of the night, he laid in a spot that he said, I know that the name's been called Luz, but I'm changing the name to Bethel because this is the land that God's going to give me. And God said, I have given the place where you're laying unto your seed I'm giving the place where you're sleeping tonight I'm giving this place 
to your seed. And now we see that Israel has come over a ridge and Bethel that had been an uninhabited place, others have taken up residence there that don't belong there. There's been some things that are going on in Bethel that God's not pleased with. And so God says, I want you to go down to Ai. And as you're going, I want you to come back and we're going to ambush. We're going to clean out Bethel. And when Bethel gets clean, Bethel is going to be yours. It took hundreds of years for it to be totally unfolded. But on that particular day, as Israel came down and turned as if it were to run, those that were in ambush watched as every man that was in Bethel and Ai came out of the city. And when they did, the Bible said that they went in and burnt the cities and started over again. Now when you read from that point on, hallelujah, they won victory after victory after victory after victory after victory after victory after victory. As a matter of fact, I think I read 29 or 30 different kings and their cities were destroyed after they were able to get to Bethel. What I want us to understand is that God brings us, amen, to a place and we and when we when we get to our Jericho, we're not that far from the place where God has for us, where it's victory after victory after victory. And the reason that there was such a struggle and the reason that there was such a fight while they were in Egypt, while they were in the wilderness, and while they were standing at the Jordan River, and while they stood at Jericho, and while they stood on the other side of Jericho, and, and, and Achan grabbed a hold of the stones, the reason that there was such a struggle is because we're talking about something in the spirit realm. The, the evil one understood if they ever get to Bethel, my kingdom's coming down. If they ever get to the house of God, there's a victory that's going to be done that's going to be won that would never be able to be touched as long as they don't get to Bethel. And God's saying, come on, come on. I want you to win this one because just a little bit down here, I've got a Bethel that I want you to conquer. I promised it back to Abraham and I promised it to Isaac and to Jacob and now I'm going to give the promise that I had promised them. Come on. Don't let Jericho stop you. Don't let AI stop you. There's a place in me that you can have. And from this point on, there are blessings that will unfold. There are visions that I will give you. There are prophetic words that I will speak. There are healings and miracles. And hallelujah. And the, and the revival that you want. It happens whenever you can come beyond the things of Jericho and beyond Ai there is a conquering God said Bethel <coughs> belongs to you and today by the and today I'd like to present to you there is a place in God that you can have there is a place in God and Bethel really does belong to you Bethel really does belong to you. It's your house. It's the house of God. Hallelujah. Let's stand together in the service this afternoon. I love you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.
I find it interesting, and we'll mention this again, I find it interesting that, that in our lives we can find time for a lot of other things, but whenever somebody says, hey, let's, let's come to the house of the Lord, there's so many distractions that get in people's way so they don't get to the house of the Lord. I don't know how many people I've heard say, Pastor, I, I, you're my pastor. And I'll be to church this Sunday. And I'll look at them and say, um, I'll see you there. And one week comes by, two weeks comes by, and, and they say, oh, he knows my heart. And unfortunately, he does know their heart. Because if you're not in the house of God, you're a little ways away from Bethel. And, 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 and Jericho, Jericho is really hindering you from getting what you really need. So important, the house of God. Because it's in this house that everything, it was, it was in a house very similar to this one that I came to an altar and repented of my sins. It was in a house very similar to this one that I received the power of the Holy Ghost was in a house very similar to this that I was baptized in the precious name of Jesus Christ was in a house very similar to this that I first heard the call of God upon my life was in a house like this that I amen acknowledged a call to the ministry was in a house a light like this that I've been broken and down and not known what to do and I've knelt and begun to pray and in my Bethel I've been able to find, oh, sweet direction. I've come to the house not knowing what tomorrow would hold. But it's my house because I've decided that Bethel belongs to me. And I've come down weary from the day's activity. And I found that he was there in his house. Hallelujah. The first time when Jacob left the house of God, he left saying, it's a dreadful place. The next time he said, I'll respect the place, but this is my house. It's become mine, and I'll dwell here. Oh, hallelujah. And God has given us a place called Bethel, and Bethel is ours today. Let's worship the Lord together. In the name of Jesus Christ, I love you. I praise you, O oh God. Man, I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. Jesus be the, the Lord.